Deception, Murder in Hong Kong, how to set up and play. To set up the game, shuffle all of the murder and evidence cards, and then you're gonna deal four of each type to each player. You'll also give each player one of these badge tokens. So I am setting this up for a six player game. Now before we assign any of the roles in the game, all the players get to examine all of the face up cards. Next we're ready to set up the roles in the game. Every game will use a forensic scientist, a murderer, and a number of investigators. If you're playing with more than six players, you can also include a witness and an accomplice. It's a team game, so the forensic scientist and the investigator and the witness are working together against the murderer and the accomplice. So here are the roles for this game. Since I'm setting it up for six players, I've got the forensic scientist and the murder. I'm choosing to use the witness and the accomplice, and the re remaining roles are filled with investigator cards. You'll next just shuffle those and randomly give one to each player. Once all players have their roll card and look at them secretly, whoever has the forensic scientist card can reveal it now to the table. So let's say this player had the forensic scientist roll, they'll reveal it to the table, and now they can clear off their weapon and evidence cards and badge token. Next, the forensic scientist will ask all players to close their eyes and then they'll ask the murderer and accomplice, if you're playing with one, to open their eyes. Next, the murderer, let's say it's this player, will silently select one of their weapon cards and one of their evidence cards. So that will only be visible to the forensic scientist and the accomplice. The forensic scientist will then have the murderer and accomplice close their eyes and then if you're using the witness, the witness will now open their eyes and the forensic scientist will simply just point to the two players that are the accomplice and the murderer. The witness will not know which one is which. The witness would then close their eyes and then all players could open their eyes. Next, the forensic scientist will set up the clue tiles. They're always gonna use the cause of death clue tile, and then they're going to get to select one of the four location of the crime tiles. Then they'll randomly draw four tiles from this shuffled deck of clue tiles. So in every game, regardless of player count, you're always going to have six of these tiles available to the forensic scientist, the cause of death, the location of crime that they selected, and then four randomly drawn clue tiles. Next, the forensic scientist will silently begin placing a bullet on each of these tiles. They can place the bullets in any order. Remember, the forensic scientist is never allowed to speak in the game. The only way they give clues to the other investigator is through the placement of these bullets. And as the forensic scientist is placing these bullets, all of the players in the game are allowed to freely discuss what they're seeing. Also, once a decision is made about placing a bullet on a tile, that cannot be changed. And once the final bullet is placed, you're ready to start the first round. Starting with the player to the left of the forensic scientist and going clockwise, each player is going to get 30 uninterrupted seconds to make their case for how they interpret the evidence. Once all players around the table have had their 30 second opportunity, that will end the round. Then the forensic scientist will draw a new tile, a new clue tile, and then decide which of the four to discard. So let's say they decide to discard this one. They don't think it's too helpful. They'll replace it with the newly drawn one, and then they get the option of placing this bullet on one of the choices. And then just like in the first round, all players in clockwise order will get their 30 second opportunity to present their case, present their rationale to the group. Once the second round is done, we'll set up for the third and final round, 
by repeating the process. So the forensic scientist will draw a new clue tile and then they'll select one of these to discard and then place the bullet on the new tile. At any point on a player's turn in rounds one, two, or three, they can use their badge token to make an accusation. They would select the player that they think is the murderer and they would point to what they think is the murder weapon and the evidence. Unless the accusation is exactly right about both of the cards, the forensic scientist will simply say no. If you get to the end of the third round and there has not been any successful accusation, an exact accusation of the murder weapon and the correct evidence card, then the murderer and the accomplice are going to win the game. And remember, each player only gets to use their badge token once. So once they make that accusation, it's out of the game and they no longer have the option of making that accusation. If, on the other hand, there is a successful accusation where somebody has correctly identified the murder weapon and the proper evidence card, the forensic scientist will say yes, and potentially the investigators would have won the game. But if you're playing with the witness role, at that point, the murderer and the accomplice get one final chance to talk, consult, and then make a final decision on who they think the witness is. If they correctly identify the witness, then they still win the game. If the murderer and the accomplice don't correctly identify who they think the witness is, then they lose and the investigators win. So throughout the course of the discussions, obviously the murderer and the accomplice are trying to direct attention away from the murderer while the investigators are trying to root out the murderer and the correct cards and the witness is trying to subtly guide the investigators towards the correct solution. There are a couple additional variants. There's some additional clue cards here. After the first round setup, when you've drawn your four random clue tiles, then you can shuffle in all of these into the deck. And then when this gets drawn randomly, instead of replacing one of these, you would simply follow the event text. These are specifically called event tiles, while these are generically called scene tiles. The other variant is the addition of the consulting detective role. What they can do is instead of using their badge token to make an accusation, they can instead discard it to reveal their role to everybody. If they do that, they won't have the option to use their token to make an accusation, so they may decide, even if they are the consulting detective, not to reveal their role and instead use their badge token in the normal fashion. And the consulting detective role would just be substituted for one of the investigators. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Deception, Murder in Hong Kong.